Yeah, this is it's one of those frustrating things. I mean, we've been through this before with uh, community colleges, and they, they just don't seem to be aware of their responsibilities to provide accommodations under the ADA. And uh, so I'm not sure yeah. we want to, I'm not sure we want to get involved in any kind of just paying for the interpreter services just because they're saying they don't want to. I'm, I'm wondering if we should develop kind of a plan to, to kind of meet with them and, and uh, just review with them what their responsibilities are um, and, and just, you know, almost educate them about what they're required to do when a, when a deaf person requests interpreter services and communication access for, for any kind of program that they're in. I think we should start with that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that, having a meeting? Yeah, maybe start with that. Just get some preliminary information first and then um, then set up a meeting and just really kind of let them know that what our experience has been with other schools um, and, and what they've done to fulfill their requirements to pay for these, uh, these interpreter costs. They may not even be aware of how to obtain interpreters, um, the whole interpreter referral system. Uh, you know, they just may, may not be aware of it. But I think, on the other hand, if we have such a meeting and they still say that they cannot provide these services for whatever reason, most likely they're going to say it's because of cost. Yeah, that's probably where they're going to where they're going to go, but you know, and there's a part of me that doesn't want to get into a big legal hassle with them. So I guess w I think we should be prepared to propose that we would maybe do a cost share, maybe propose that we, you know, split the cost 50-50 with them at the very least and so that we don't delay our client's ability to start her program. Uh, I wouldn't want to get her all hung up in some legal wrangling with the school. So, so I think we go in and we sort of let them know what their responsibilities are, but have a backup plan or a proposal to do a cost share, and hopefully they'll, they'll buy into that. What are your thoughts on that? Yep. I think that's a really good idea. The PepNet resources are, are really good, and, and we could probably uh, contact them before our meeting and, and see what they, could, what they could provide to us, maybe even some, some documents, some handouts, some resources so we can really show them uh, and get them involved in, in some of PepNet's activities because uh, that's, their, that's their emphasis is post-secondary education, communication access. So I think that would be great. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. She's local and uh you know, she she would I'm sure she'd be happy to get involved. But like I say, look, let's have a backup plan. Let's be prepared to I don't think let's be prepared to try to pay half without so we won't cause delay.
Yeah, we probably should check with our legal department, let them know what we're dealing with here. Um, but also let them know that we, our, our primary concern is not to delay our client's program. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if hopefully they'll, they'll allow us, as they have in the past, we've done this in the past when, when we've r r run into the situation, do a cost share and then uh, and at least start there and then maybe we can, down the road, we can get them to assume the full responsibility. Good. And hopefully that'll take the pressure off Jamie so she doesn't feel it's all on her. You know, we can, we can kind of take, take the role of meeting with the school and she doesn't have to worry about that. Um, and we'll, we'll just fill her in as to what our progress is and what our final decision is on the cost share. All right, sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. You're welcome.